Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and welcome to the fourth video in the beginner's guide to Unity 6. This time we'll be covering lighting and shadows. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload. Feel free to leave a comment and drop a like. I also have a Patreon page where you can help be a part of this channel and you'll also find all the scripts and the assets to this series there too, along with plenty of other things. You can also now join as a free member. Now on with the tutorial. So as mentioned, this particular object, we can already see that there is a shadow here. However, the lighting in the scene isn't quite adequate. Now, we spoke about this directional light a little earlier in this uh, video series. And if we zoom out, we can see that it does indeed look like it's pointing a certain way. Now, if we drag and drop this all the way up here, nothing will change. If we try moving our light source this way, nothing will change. Everything with a directional light is controlled over here using these parameters in transform and these parameters in the light. What we could do is we could change the rotation on the X and you'll notice that things in the scene start changing already. We can see some shadows and we can see what we have put on the textures also change relative to whatever the light is pointing towards. So for example, this ground at the moment, although it looks the way it does, if we were to continue rotating, it would look very, very different. The way we have the texture set up for this particular ground section is very important, depending on time of day. You can also rotate different ways like that. And we can see just how much the fence shadow is impacted. Same with the wall. Uh, the Z is not going to do a whole lot just because it's kind of spinning around. It's relative to X and Y mostly at this point. We can change the color of the lighting. So if you wanted it bright white, you could. If you wanted it dark and dismal at any point, you could. If you wanted a bright pink hue, you absolutely could do that. So if you're in some kind of creepy dungeon, that fits quite perfect. I'm going to set it back to its original orangey yellowy kind of color just to give it a more pleasant light you could change the uh, change the intensity make it very intense and you can also change the indirect multiplier which isn't going to be relative at the moment but it would be further on in development the shadow type can be changed to no shadows hard shadows or soft shadows naturally it would change to no shadows you wouldn't see any shadows at all this is relevant with some light sources, depending on what type of game you're making and what the light is. Hard shadows would basically mean it's more solid lines for your shadows. I'm going to set it back to soft shadows. There are further options that you can select. They're not too important. The only one I probably would uh, point out is the render mode, changing from auto to important. Keep in mind though, when using light sources within Unity 6, you may end up pulling more resources, which could basically reduce your frame rate. So try not to have too much lighting going on or complex lighting. There are things that you can do to change how it looks um, without lighting or too many light sources, uh, but there are other light sources that we could explore. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off this directional light and to do that, I can go over here to the inspector panel and untick this. It means our scene is completely dark. We can't see anything because there's no real light source. How do we add other light sources? Well, let's go to game object and we can go down to light and you can see that we have the option for directional light, point light, spotlight and area light. There are some probes that we can use. However, we'll just stick to lighting at the moment. Let's go with point light. Now, you should be able to see that after selecting this, there is a slight bit of light in our scene. Point lights are more useful when it comes to refined areas. For example, if you have a mansion, like in Resident Evil, you wouldn't specifically use a directional light. A directional light is used more for outside purposes. A point light and a spotlight, which we'll get to in a moment, are more appropriate for inside environments. Now, what this means is that we can change the range to whatever you want it to. And you can see that it is starting to have an impact on how the scene looks similar to how the directional light was working. The color can also be changed. Again, if you want to give it that slight hue, you can. 
Uh, this mode here, real time, which we didn't really touch on when it came to the directional light, but I will explain now what the mode is. You can have real time mixed or baked. The idea of real time means that everything inside the game is live. It's happening real time in terms of the lighting. If you have a light source that never needs to change, nothing relies on it per se, you can bake it. And what that means is it sets how the game will look with that lighting that you have set. This can ultimately save resources in the long run. We can change the intensity if we want, obviously. Same principles as when we had the directional light. And again, with the indirect multiplier, it's not too relevant right now. However, you may want to set shadows back on so we have uh, soft shadows. Let's set our intensity back to one and let's move our light source around. And you can see that this time, moving the light source does indeed have an impact on what the game looks like. Like with the directional light, it emits the light but the way you change the position and where the light source comes from is different depending on that light source. Next, let's check out the light next down, which is Spotlight. And this one can be used to basically put a focus on something. If I move it up and down, you should be able to see this circle here represents where the light is. And we can change the range so it goes further. We can change the intensity so it's brighter. Same with the colour, we can change it, maybe give it a bit of a red look on there. And you can change the spot angle. This will make it very thin or very large, depending on what kind of area you want to illuminate. You can use all three light sources in conjunction with one another. So for example, if we were to turn the directional light back on, you would still see the light from the spotlight and the point light. The point light, not so much, but that doesn't matter too much because you could always just turn that off. There we go. So what can we ultimately do with a lot of these light sources? You know, how do they make things look better? Well, do you remember when we applied the normal maps to these objects here? Well, obviously a normal map can have a big impact on how an object will look. A good example of this is our bridge right here. So what we'll do is let's turn our directional light off and let's keep our point light off and let's move our spotlight to cover the bridge. Let's move it this way. If I can grab hold of it. There we go. So I'm going to put it in the middle of the bridge. Let's lift it upwards so we cover the bridge a little bit more and let's make our range a bit further and let's change the spot angle to be a little bit more covering the bridge. I'm going to change it to a yellowy kind of colour. Very, very slight yellow. And at the moment, this bridge just doesn't quite look right. Something doesn't quite look right with it. That comes down to the object itself. So what we'll do is let's right click on the bridge and you'll notice down here you have an option for prefab. Near the bottom, you should have unpack completely. So let's press unpack completely. Next, we can click on tube. And you'll notice that this particular game object has the material that we can't necessarily change. You can work on this in different ways if you wanted to. You could add other textures to it if you wanted. For example, if we drag and drop this bridge texture onto our bridge, it works for us and we're now able to manipulate that material. So this kind of comes back to the last time when we spoke about prefabs and game objects. Depending on what the object is, you may need to just change a couple of things. In this instance, it didn't have a material, it was already attached to the object and we want to be able to modify that material so we can just create a new one by adding the texture to it. So what we can do now is go here, go to the material down here and let's drag and drop the normal map onto it. And you can now see that the lighting has made this bridge look a bit grittier, like it's a little bit wet and this is where you can work in conjunction with prefabs and game objects and materials and textures with the lighting and the shadows to make them look kind of cool. It just depends how far you want to take it. So the recommendation that I will give you is work with a lot of these pieces and make something look really, really cool. Now, I like how that's kind of looking wet and dirty and gritty, but not quite the normal map. Uh, you may get an error here that says this texture is not marked as a normal map. If you click fix now, 
it will just fix the error automatically in Unity. Again, this is Unity detecting something that it thinks probably should be the case. And most of the time it works nicely. So setting this to zero means basically it looks how it did before. A bit flat, a bit boring. Whether we have the light on it or not. However, changing it to 0 0.5, uh, maybe a bit more, let's do 0 0.75. Gives it that extra 3D kind of gritty look of it. Combined with the lighting makes it look really, really cool. And this is how a lot of game developers will at least start making a game that looks okay, but they can work with the lighting to make it even better. Let's turn our directional light back on. However, let's put the intensity down a little bit. Let's have this as 0 0.5. And let's have our point light on. And to be honest, I think that looks kind of cool. Best thing that you can do at this point is to work with the light and the shadows to get things looking how you would want them to look. For example, if we go back to the ground and go to uh, the materials folder, we can change that ground. Uh, let's have them a normal map of 0 0.5, uh, a bit more metallic and a bit less smooth. And now that looks kind of cool. So already at this point, we actually have a decent game kind of in place. And never be afraid to move things around like so, like moving the light sources around to see if you can perfect how things would look. Uh, because lighting and shadows are incredibly important when it comes to game development. So next time we'll talk about something else which is incredibly important when it comes to game development. Physics and gravity. They are just as important as lighting and shadows. Uh, so remember to subscribe and click that notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload and I will see you next time.